I would like to be the all-time receiver. This place is going to come apart when number 80 gets introduced. Wide receiver, number 80, Jerry Rice. Go deep, he's got Rice, another touchdown. Uh, he's amazing, he's just doing things that no one else in this league is doing. Pumping, goes back the other way, and Rice made an incredible catch. Goes down to Jerry Rice, what a catch, gets away. Greatest ever, he must be the greatest receiver. He's a big the right side, Rice is there, oh my, a one-handed catch, one of his greatest catches. Throws long for Rice, down the sideline, he's on, he's on the 30, the 20, touchdown 49ers. This is a Heat Rocks production. What's up everybody, your boy Pat. Back again with another edition of Second Take, where I talk tech and I speak sports. Today's topic of the day is, is Jerry Rice the GOAT? Now, before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe, as it helps out the channel. I'm currently at 124 subscribers, next goal 150. Do your part and hit that thumb and hit that subscribe button. Thank you. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why I believe Jerry Rice is the GOAT. Not the GOAT of wide receivers, not the GOAT of offense, but the GOAT of the entire NFL, as in its entire history. I'm going to show how Rice stacks up against some of the greatest wide receivers of all time. I'm also going to touch upon how Rice was able to dominate for his entire career, despite playing the bulk of his career in a run-dominated league. All while having to deal with an NFL that was not as favorable to play in as a wide receiver in his era versus how it is to play in today's era. Let's first take a listen to Super Bowl head coach John Gruden as he discusses Jerry Rice. I was a big fan to be honest with you. I was a coaching intern. I just followed him around and watched him. He had a magic about him. He's flash 80 because that's what he had on his license plate. But when I started coaching him in Oakland, we nicknamed him the GOAT the greatest of all time. So let's first talk about Jerry Rice's stats and accomplishments. Jerry Rice is a 13-time Pro Bowler, 10-time First Team All-Pro, and a two-time Offensive Player of the Year. He has three Super Bowl rings, one Super Bowl MVP, he's led the league in receiving yards six times, led the league in touchdowns six times, and led the league in receptions twice. He holds the record for having a catch in 274 games straight. He has 14 seasons of 1,000 yards or more receiving. He did that 11 times in a row at one time in his career. The second closest is Randy Moss, who has 10 such seasons total in his career. Jerry Rice's career spanned from 1985 to 2004. He has amassed 22,895 yards 197 receiving touchdowns, 208 total touchdowns, and 1,549 catches, all while playing 284 games. These are all NFL records. Here's how Jerry Rice compares to some of the greatest wide receivers to ever play this game. From Steve Largent, to Calvin Johnson, to Larry Fitzgerald, to T.O., to Randy Moss. All of these receivers have played in today's current NFL, with the exception of Steve Largent. So let's put this into perspective. The second closest receiver to Jerry Rice is Larry Fitzgerald, when you compare the stats. He is currently 171 catches behind Rice, 5,812 yards behind Rice, and a staggering 67 touchdowns behind Jerry Rice. Keep in mind, Fitzgerald is playing in his 17th season and is 37 years old. So the likelihood of him catching Rice in any of these stats is very unlikely. But let's take it a step further. A wide receiver could get drafted today and average 100 receptions per year, 1,500 yards per year, and 13 touchdowns per year for 15 years straight. And he still wouldn't break any of Rice's records. So let's take a look at one of today's current receivers, Julio Jones. Julio Jones is currently 30 years of age. He is playing in his 10th season in the league. He has 840 receptions, 12,763 yards, and 60 touchdowns. If he were to keep up this pace, he would have 1,680 receptions for 25,526 yards 
and 120 touchdowns. He would actually break two of Jerry Rice's records. But let's be honest here. He would have to play at the same level of production in the first half of his career in the second half of his career and while sustaining no drop off and not having to worry about potentially getting injured. Rice actually dealt with the injury bug in 1997 due to an ACL tear and he was essentially robbed out of an entire season at the age of 35. The likelihood of Julio Jones or any other receiver best in Rice's stats are very very slim. Let's look at another stat. There are currently 47 players in the NFL, in NFL history, with 10,000 or more receiving yards. Here's a chart to look at while I discuss. Do you see how much of a lead Jerry Rice has over the next closest player? That player being Larry Fitzgerald, who's 37 years old, playing in his 17th season in the NFL? This is the ultimate reason why I call Jerry Rice the GOAT because the second closest player is still miles apart from being on pace with Jerry Rice. How can anyone say that Brady or Montana or Manning is the GOAT when basically all of their stats are very similar whether looking at yards or Super Bowls or whatever. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a listen to one of the greatest tight ends to ever play in the NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. Because what he did, Skip, Jerry was a guy, not only could he get deep, but Jerry was one of the first guys that could take a five-yard route and turn it into an 80-yard spectacular. And for me, Skip, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to touch his record. I don't see anybody getting 22,000 yards. I don't see that 197 receiving touchdown, Skip. That ain't going to happen. It's over. Forget it. I mean, let that sink in. Uh, who's still playing? Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald is like 70 touchdowns away. Skip, he, he's never going to get it. He's like 8,000 yards away. He's never going to get it. Yeah. And the thing is, Skip, when Jerry had 22 mm -hmm. receiving touchdowns yep. in 1987, they led the league in rushing. Yep. Name a team. So whoever led the league. So what do you think the likelihood of a receiver for the Baltimore Ravens? Because they led the league in rushing. What do you think the likelihood of them having a receiver that leads the league in touchdown reception and while leading the league in rushing. Because that's what he did. Let's continue on with some more stats. Randy Moss holds the NFL record with 23 touchdowns in a season. This is a season in which Brady threw 50 touchdowns in. Rice is second on that list with 22 touchdowns in a season. The difference, Montana only threw 31 touchdowns that year and Jerry Rice literally only played 12 games that year due to a strike-shortened NFL season. These two guys are the only receivers in NFL history to have put up 20-plus touchdowns in an NFL season. To top it off, previously, like Shannon Sharp said, that year the 49ers actually led the league in rushing. So Jerry Rice was able to amass 22 receiving touchdowns in 12 games in a year in which his quarterback only threw 31 touchdowns and his team led the league in rushing. Let that marinate for a bit. Another point of reference. If you were to take the top 25 seasons for a wide receiver, era adjusted, Jerry Rice has seven of them. The next closest is Moss with three. I want to take this moment to just go over how many touchdowns Jerry Rice has had in his NFL career year by year up until his injury year of 1997 where he tore his ACL and came back to actually play that year four months later. So I'm just going to start by naming the year 1985 and just going up year by year how many touchdowns this guy had every year because they're basically Pro Bowl years for most wide receivers, with maybe the exception of Jerry's rookie year. So 1985, three touchdowns. Then he finished, he followed up with 15, 22, 9, 17, 13, 14, 10, 15, 13, 15, 8, and then one in 1997. And the reason he only played two games, like I alluded, due to his ACL tear. Now let's take a listen to Super Bowl champion John Gruden for the second time. He's the most dominant player at his position that I've ever seen. 
This guy had a 154 mile an hour fastball. You could not cover him. He wants the end zone. Rice has got it. Touchdown, oh, 49ers. He could beat double coverage. You could put man to man with help over the top. However you want to try to defend him, he can beat any coverage. He can take a short pass to the house. Probably the greatest receiver after the catch. He's got Rice. He breaks loose. He's going to be gone. I don't think they can catch him. A play that seems to work every time they do it. The last thing I want to bring up is Jerry Rice actually played in the NFL as a 40-year-old. And I know a lot of people look at him and say, well, most of his career he played with two Hall of Fame quarterbacks in Joe Montana and Steve Young. But let's not forget the fact that at the age of 40, he was playing with a guy named Rich Gannon, who essentially was a journeyman in the NFL and had his best years when he was playing with who? Jerry Rice. Now let's take a look at the stats of Jerry Rice while he was playing for the Raiders. In 2001, he was 39 years old. That year, he had 83 receptions for 1,139 yards and nine touchdowns. Now I want to compare this to a pro bowler of 2019, Jarvis Landry. Now remember, Rice, 2001, 39 years old, Jarvis Landry, 27 years old in 2019, in the prime of his career, had 83 catches, the same as Jerry Rice, for 1174 yards to Rice's 1139, and six touchdowns to Rice's nine. Now you make the call on your own. I'm talking about a 39 year old receiver in basically year 18 of his career going up against a guy who's been in the league for about three or four years and putting up the same exact numbers with a journeyman quarterback in Rich Gannon. Now the last stat I want to share is in 2002 Jerry Rice was a 40 year old man. He had 92 catches for 1211 yards and seven touchdowns. In this same year, Rich Gannon passed for 4,689 yards, his most yards ever in a season. It was approximately 800 more than he had had in any season in his career. He also had a career high 67.6% .6 completion percentage when he was a career 60.2 completion percentage for his career. He also had 418 completions total which were the most ever for Rich Gannon in a year. Jerry Rice at the age of 40 led the Raiders to the Super Bowl. Now despite them losing the Super Bowl, I think I have made the most compelling case ever for Jerry Rice. When you talk about a man who redefined passing, who redefined the art of being a receiver, who redefined being able to take a five yard catch and put it to the house, Jerry Rice is not only the greatest wide receiver of all time, he is the GOAT of the NFL. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on YouTube, Instagram, the Anchor app. You can also find me on Spotify as well as Apple and Google Podcasts. It's your boy Pat. Peace. Catch you in the next one. For the end zone, drills a pass, Jerry Rice, touchdown 49ers. He now holds just about every Super Bowl receiving record. What a show. Launches it for the end zone, Jerry Rice. Oh, what a catch by Rice. Throws for Rice. He's got it at the pin. Another brilliant pass by Jerry Rice. Throws over the middle. A fine catch by Rice. Rice into the 20. He's down to the 19. 49ers have won the Super Bowl.